What about the important challenges that are ahead um, for all of us and, and how, what sort of role do you see technology playing to, 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 supri- uh, to provide help for us in, in, in cities? Well, I think I'd say to start with that, that uh, our, our fight for the environment will ultimately be won or lost in our cities. And secondly, we have profound challenges in the utilization of natural resources, energy, water, waste. How do we move goods and people around cities? How do we create more resilient spaces with changing weather patterns? How do we resolve issues of safety and opportunity and, and drive places where hope and, and place making sort of combine? And so there are many problems to tackle. I believe they are all possible within our lifetime to address many of these issues, but it requires a collaboration between many fields of discipline, and it's not just architecture or civil engineering or master planning, but it involves biology, ICT, advanced sciences in mathematics and physics, as well as a whole range of other uh, fields and everything from anthropology to, to art. There are many competing visions of, of the future city. Um, smart cities are seen as a step towards a more sustainable, a more livable, more efficient urban environment. And I just wanted to get your perspective on that. What is your vision for the future and how do you see um, the future city? How will it look and how will it feel? I don't think, except in, in and even in new building samples, um, we're going to see a dramatic shift. We're going to see a slow, measured regeneration, redevelopment of our environments, including our infrastructure. And so for some, many citizens, that change won't necessarily be perceivable, but energy bills may start to fall and water bills will start to fall. We'll have less inconvenient moments when weather drops a lot of water on us and we flood our cities. We'll deal with um, other issues of resiliency differently. And I think the most profound place we'll see it is in human interaction in, in very specific areas. For example, um, where we used to plug people into machines to see how their physiology was changing, now we can sense them using the physical built space and actually enhance their lives, their security, their health um, in, in very plausible and very tangible ways. And so I think it's a bit of underlying infrastructure shift where we'll start to sense it over time. Areas like mobility and transportation services will see it much more rapidly. And then in our personal lives, how the things that we wear and use start to interact with the physical space to enhance the more holistic view of the way the city can provide us services. A little story. We, we started a project years ago, not that we were intended to go try to build a city, but we needed a use case because nothing was moving fast enough in the world and we, we developed a project which is an important research project called Planet Valley. And it was through that process I realized just how naive we were in the tech industry, just thinking we could flood the market with technology and everybody would adopt. And, and there were complications of the language we used. Um, not just the technology industry, but we had different vernacular, and so there was a communications issue. Then there was a, and I think still the case, there's a belief in the technology industry that everything that is built is, div- is driven by government um, intervention. And while there's a role for government in policy and in, in helping sometimes with underlying financing methods, principally private developers and, and citizens drive the change. And so I think if one just runs it and just says it, simple adoption, we don't get there. And so I think there are a couple of things. Firstly, the way we finance these spaces needs to change. And the way that we think about describing value needs to change. It's not just simply I get a widget that works on a building. It's how do I really describe value in economic, social, government and environmental ways that allows us to actually build models to say, here's where the value is, here's how we allow new things to be developed or regenerated, here's how that incorporates technology, here's the real value that's derived from it, and here's how it matters to people in their you know, various stakeholder segments. I'd like to ask you some questions about the future. Um, in particular, I'm interested in your understanding of the role of the professionals in the built environment. Um, engineers have historically been 
uh, an organization, a professional organization, professional individuals that have taken advances in technology and science and applied them for the benefit of society. Do you see that continue? What role will engineers have in the future? And, and what about the other professionals that are involved in the, the built environment? So one having jumped from the tech sector into sort of this hybrid market where we're in the tech sector but working on these types of problems. Um, I found it quite interesting how many different roles existed to make a decision. And so you have engineers and architects and architect engineers, systems guys, infrastructure, all over the place. And, and we have some of the same in the tech industry. And I think what has, what has become very apparent is that there is a shifting role in one, how we're educated, because we tend to specialize much too quickly and then we go do our practical work in industry and that sometimes can blinker us to other developments in other parallel industries or other industries that, that interact with us. Um, we can't ignore the biological world, but we do. We don't always necessarily understand all builds of physics that we need to understand. Uh, we don't understand uh, anthropology in the way that we need to and so I think we have to shift to uh, a much more integrated educational environment where there's much better understanding across many fields and, and that will drive greater collaboration because we'll be speaking a common nomenclature and have a, a common vernacular to deal with some of these complex problems. So role for engineers definitely. I started as a software engineer and, and still keep my, my eye on the market in, in that area but for, for me it's when the Pritzker Prize gets awarded to a non-architect I think we'll get there. In the same way that the Renaissance, some of the greatest infrastructure that ever built was designed by artists who happened to be mathematicians and also were maybe architects or physicists or whatever they may be. But they took a, holicti a collective view and a holistic view of society at that point and could imagine how it might evolve and out of that came the answers. And there was some enabling technology in that in mathemat mathematics at the time. But So I see an increasing role of tech to look at the whole value chain of what we design and create but with a much more Artesian approach to how we think about these complex problems because they are not just mathematical equ equations, they're highly organic in their outcomes.